thing. You guys, I think, have done a good job of just being super data driven. Maybe talk a little bit about how at Tribe you guys are using data, how it um, you know uh, affects the decisions you make, and how you guys are using that uh, once you make an investment to support the companies. Yeah, um, so I think there's a couple ways to answer that question. Um, there, you know, uh, one is pe people use the word data driven. Where um, I'm really averse to that uh, because it just means that you're just going to go um, like, you're not going to be, you're not going to think about what this data means in the first place. And so we like to use the word data informed internally. And so we came out with this framework uh, called the eight ball um, where it was essentially, how do we quantify a product market fit for any company that uses software or is enabled by technology in some way. And you know, the, the reason we had that was it's, it's akin to financial accounting, right? If you, if you look at, uh, statement of cash flow or balance sheet, uh, you know, P&L, et cetera. These are standardized frameworks that were invented in the late 1800s to help guide you <clears throat> on what are the transparent things that you want to look at for a company before you dig in deeper. So if you, if you look at a financial accounting statement, there's a very good chance that you won't be interested based on the financials, right? Like there, you might say no, right? Like you're, you're nodding your head saying like, yeah, like that company doesn't feel healthy to me. So I'm just going to pass and then look on to the next thing. However, if you, if you find something that's interesting and say like, you know, this, the way in which this company has cash management uh, or efficiency um, or, you know, overall, um, uh, 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 their overall cash flow in nature, uh, maybe I should dig in deeper. And you start doing your work from there. Then you start thinking about demand signals. What does the overall, uh, wh uh, what does their customer base look like? What's the recurring nature of it? Um, uh, what, the, what does the margin structure look like? Uh, if it's lower, is, there, is the market big enough? Is the volume large enough where they can get to a certain scale? You start asking these bigger questions about different industries, but then you're able to compare multiple companies to each other um, uh, by using this and then dig in deeper. But you know what, uh, in the private markets, one of the issues has always been, how do you do that? What are the standardized frameworks that you use? Can, can you actually measure it? And financial statements don't work as well for early stage, mostly because... Um, those are all lagging indicators. So if you're, if you're investing in a seed plus or series A or series A, a lot of these companies have really de minimis revenue um, or revenue that's really not going to uh, uh, paint its picture yet. Uh, and that's coming later. And so you're looking at forms of demand or engagement, which is what I call it. And so you have to have standardized frameworks for that. And that's really where we spent almost all of our time. Now you can take that and say, okay, great. You can actually do more. The more data you have, you can do more of that for even later stage companies. And we do that as well. Uh, because uh, investors typically kind of what I'd say regress to the mean is they just go back to the finances and say, hey, they said they're going to do this, but I don't see it reflected in the finances. Sure, but you could have said that for Facebook, Airbnb, Uber at some point, um, kind of, you know, Google at some point as well. Like uh, you would never really understand how these businesses work unless you could look at what we call the software ledger. Um, and that's understanding the demand signals for how a company works. So our framework was called the APOL. We published this, uh, you know, about six years ago, uh, my uh, partner had done this. He had published this actually, uh, even while he was at Facebook. <clears throat> and you know, if you're, if you're coming into Facebook today as a product manager, you read this. If you are learning uh, product market fit quantitatively, like uh, what are the frameworks that you use at Stanford? They reflect our work. If you go to Sequoia's website, they have a section for product market fit. It links back to our work because we created a standardized framework to understand product market fit for a company at a certain life cycle. Um, and, and that's what we do really well is to just get those frameworks out for ourselves. Uh, and we have a ton of software to help automate that. We have a ton of software that stores all this for every company we've ever seen. So we can get better at better at not just evaluating, but giving this insights and feedback back to the company. Like if you're a founder and you're starting a company, the first question you ask everyone is like, what does it take to raise a series seed? What does it take to raise a series A? What does it take to raise a series B? What are the milestones I need to achieve? And we basically say, here are the fucking milestones that you need to achieve. And it's, uh, and here's the gradients of, of where you need to be. And, and, and here's what use of proceeds really look like and, and, and what people are going to gauge you on. And this is what we tell our entrepreneurs. This is where we think we can help. But uh, more importantly, because it's standardized, this is where this is a standardized framework you can use to reflect back to the market as well. And so we use this as a foundation to understand where a company is at its, uh, um, at its life cycle. 
And then what is this going to take to scale? Like, what, um, you know, uh, uh, is this going to take 20 million, 50 million, 80 million of sub, uh, subsidization of venture capital or uh, other sources of capital to get us to a uh, certain size of scale? It's what venture capital is all about, right? Which is the, the velocity of growth is what people are trying to invest in. I think a lot of people kind of forget that, right? Is it, is it a sublinear path? Is it super linear or is it just linear? And all companies have different, uh, uh, different stages. And, and at some point, I'm sure we'll talk about network effect because we both also come from that same background. Um, but that's just as important, right? It, uh, is that you can only really think about network effect if you have a foundation to understand where a company is in its life cycle and do they have product market fit or not? Uh, you know, frankly, most products don't have product market fit and that's what you want to know. Do you want to spend your time as a founder on something that's not working? And, and in my opinion, if I knew that earlier on, I would say I wouldn't want to have done those 10 things. I would want to only focus on the two that started working because it had product market fit.